Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to my Practically Imperfect Life. So today's video is going to be a little bit of a Sunday day in the life slash reset. Just kind of showing you the things that I focus on and address on Sundays in order to try to make the rest of the week go nice and smoothly for us. Now, added on top of the fact that I've got to get ready for the week, I am on call tonight. So I've talked a little bit about the nursing job that I have where I'm on call for seven evenings and I'm off for seven evenings. So starting at five o'clock, my time is not really my own. At that point, I could be called out at any point to go help a patient at their home. So I have to try to get things done pretty efficiently on Sunday afternoons, but I think we'll be able to do that and still enjoy some just quiet time or some relaxing time. So we'll see. Um, anyways, right now we are getting ready to go to church this morning. I teach Sunday school at our church and then we'll have our service after that. And then we will check in back when we get home. Okay, so we're back from church and um, I'm sitting outside because it's just absolutely glorious outside. It is so pretty. Uh, so wanted to just make sure I clarified, like I don't dedicate like my whole Sunday to just doing nonstop work because Sunday is one of the few days when all of us are typically home. We can do things together as a family and whatnot, but I do a lot, a certain portion of the day in order to try to get certain things done and prepared that will make the rest of the week go smoothly. So typically my big focuses on Sundays are getting laundry done. So I at least try to get all of my laundry done. Um, my husband takes care of his laundry on a certain day of the week. My kids each are responsible for theirs, but if I can get mine out of the way, that's really great. I also wash like all of the covers on all of the couches to get all the pet fur cleaned up. Um, I do all of the meal planning for the week. And this week in particular, um, we're really trying to shop our garden and shop our pantry because we, we have a few things still growing fresh in the garden. We wanna try to use those while they are fresh. We've kind of canned what we've wanted to can for the season. So we do want to try to use things up. So I'll do a little bit of checking in the garden and see what I've got and do our meal plan for the week. And then of course I got to do the school prep. So anything that I did not manage to get graded as we were going through the school week, I will get graded today. And then I will get all of our lesson planning done for this week, or at least getting things that I have planned previously prepared and in the kids binders and into their desk drawers um, and things like that. So all in all, you know, it really is just a matter of dedicating a few hours of the day um, and being, I don't know, a good steward with that time, you know, making sure that I'm not getting distracted with a bunch of things while I'm trying to get those tasks accomplished. That gives me a larger portion of the day free to be able to enjoy it with family and things like that. So um, it's so pretty outside. I'd love to be able to just do some gardening today um, and work on some stuff outside or, you know, hang out with the kids outside. But the downside is that today I do start work at five. So I have less of the day free than I would like. Um, but on the Sundays that I'm off, you know, I definitely would let myself get distracted by the beautiful weather outside and enjoy that versus getting some indoor stuff done. But let's just bunker down. We'll get it all finished. I'm going to go change out of my church clothes and we'll take you along, show you what we've got to get done. Actually pretty quick for me to do largely because I did prep work over the summer so I have a lesson plan book that I have all of the classes listed for the kids so they've each got you can see here they've each got their own tab there is my son's with all of his classes and then the assignments typed in and then there's my daughter's and then I have one for our group subjects so what I do is I highlight in yellow the things that we've already completed so once I've put them in the grade book and I know that they're done I will highlight them out. Oops, gotta highlight that one. And then that lets me know what's the next thing that we need to be putting into our planners. So some things, the format doesn't change. So here's my daughter's planner. So for example, on day she has lessons, it's gonna be the same format. Lesson, so-and-so, reading assignment, watch the lesson, do the practice set. And all I've gotta do is change the number if she's got a lesson done. So you can see the next lesson, lesson she's doing is 25. So I'm just gonna change that number to 25. And then if there is a quiz, then I will put that in there. You can see here, she's got a lesson, then a quiz, then some practice exams, and then a quarterly exam. Um, so that's what she's gonna do there. For things that are a little bit longer, like here for physics, rather than like typing it all in, I copy and paste. So I'll go over here to her physics, and I'm just going to copy that. I will come over here. And I will paste it in. And then 
if I want to, I can, you know, split things up onto different lines. Now there's nothing here for me to grade. There's no lab for me to grade or anything like that. So I'm going to take that little graded note off on there and I will do that all the way down for physics. And then English. So I've talked about this a few times, but for my daughter's course, I give her her literature assignment at the start of the week. So what is it she needs to do? And then what's the writing assignment for the week? When is it due? And then I just fill in the vocabulary. So what I will get that from is here. So you see, I've got this whole box filled in with her assignment. So I will do the same thing that I normally do. I will get things kind of copied and pasted over there. All in all, this really doesn't take me too terribly long. Um, doing the government econ, personal finance, and the food science. So these are our guest hollow courses that have a bunch of videos and readings and things like that. These I will look at second because I'm going to be looking at the printed schedules I have for these, figuring out what it is we're going to be doing for that particular week and then typing those in. But it really doesn't take me all that long. Like I said, I just highlight into yellow the things we finished and then if the format is staying the same, I just change the number and if I need to, I will just copy and paste it over. So it'll probably take me about, you know, 10 minutes or so to get these over. I will get them printed and then we'll start pulling our materials for next week. chemistry in the kitchen course that the kids are both doing, which we call food science um, in our homeschool, uh, there's always these bonus printables every week. And I love to print them out because they're interesting. Because like last week, they looked at one ice cream chemistry. And then this week, they are, they're talking about sugars. So there's one about toxic sugar, how sugar can be harmful. There's one on artificial sweeteners, um, the effects of it on the brain and on health and things like that. So I find that to be really interesting. And then there was one on arsenic, which I don't know if that should worry me or not, but interesting. Last year, you know that for my son's history class and for my daughter's botany course, we did like a daily narration, uh, which is how I kind of tracked that they were following along with the assignments and retaining some information um, in courses that they were doing that were basically literature based ones. So this year, my son is doing a world history course um, and my daughter is doing a government econ course. Um, which also has elements of like personal finance and logic uh, that flows into it as well. So rather than have them do a daily narration this year, because there's a lot of reading this year, there's a lot of workbook pages and like extra activities and packets and stuff. Um, I'm doing a once a week narration prompt. So I write the prompt into their narration notebooks for each of the classes and then they do a response to it. And one thing I found, so I have been using the workbook that comes with the guest hollow program. So for example, this is my daughter's government econ one. Um, as you kind of go through it, usually each week, there's at least one, uh, one like question in the workbook where it says think and discuss, but don't answer. Uh, so it'll have some sort of a prompt or a question. And they're often really good ones that get you critically thinking. And I like those because it helps to have her practice some of the uh, things that she's learning about arguments and logical um, arguments and um, you know fallacies and all of those things that are part of the logic component of this course. So I have kind of taken some from there. So um, you know like the first week it was like why is a representative government better than a direct democracy? Uh, what groups of people would be hurt by a direct democracy? Um, I thought this was really funny. So literally I pulled this right from the workbook and um, she she read it and she looked over at me and she goes, huh, huh. Um, but it was, should the government be able to order everyone or some people to stay in their homes if there was a deadly virus spreading? Should they be able to tell people they are not allowed to leave their town or specific area? And what level of restrictions do you think the government should be able to impose? And she looks over at me and she's like, yeah, theoretically, Theoretically, and um, yeah, so they've been really interesting. Um, 
like she read a book called whatever happened to penny candy which is all about inflation and things like that um and so her prompt was uh based on what you've read do you think it makes more sense to have one parent work or two parents work and explain your answer and so the one for this week um she is going to be uh learning about civil li liberties and um things like that and this one references the alien and sedition acts which were their laws that allowed the restriction of articles and newspapers and in speech that were critical of the federal government or its officials like they could basically cause restrictions so her prompt is do you think there ever is a case where free speech should be restricted and how can such a restriction set a dangerous precedent so it gets her really thinking and then she has to write out a response to it and so i do stuff that's similar for my sons as well um, and it's been really interesting to read their thoughts each week to groceries and meal planning uh, we typically will do one big shopping trip every other week that's when we get kind of the bulk of our grocery items and we have a pretty set budget on groceries and we don't go over it um, so in case you're curious it's $350 every two weeks is what our budget is and then on the off weeks I only a lot enough to go and restock on the basics so leather loaf of bread gallon of milk maybe just a few little items but usually not more than fifty dollars worth and that's it we stick to that budget um, and i try not to ever go over it um, unless we have you know something major going on like a big family party or something like that uh, so when it comes to meal planning especially on those weeks that i'm not doing a big grocery shopping trip that's when i really like to shop what we already have digging through the freezer, seeing what sort of things I've forgotten that I have or that have been buried under other items, looking through the pantry at some of the things there and trying to come up with stuff we can make with those. Um, in the winter months, we'll pull down things that we've canned. Uh, right now, while we still got vegetables um, out in the garden, I'll walk out and see what I can pick and choose from for things for dinner and lunch. So I just did a walk out to the garden to water it and I have got a ton of green peppers that are ready to go. And I think this is probably the last push of green peppers we're going to get because they are significantly smaller than they have been over the summer, but we're getting a lot cooler at night. So, but there's probably nine or 10 <laughs> out there to pick. Um, I also still have some potatoes still in the dirt that I haven't harvested out yet. I have a couple of heads of spinach that look like they're ready to be picked. And then there are more tomatoes that are good to go as well. Um, plus looking in our pantry, uh, we have quite a bit of pasta. We have, you know, anything we need if we want to make fresh breads um, or things like that. Uh, we have quite a few canned vegetables. And then in the freezer, I noticed that I have some frozen steaks that I'd forgotten I had. I have some frozen ground beef and um, I still have some chicken that we can cook up. So I'm going to try to come up with a quick meal plan for the week using just things that we already have. So I don't have to go to the store and pick up anything extra. And then we'll show you what we come up with. Okay, so I don't use fancy meal plan sheets or anything like that. I just use a scrap piece of paper and then I copy it onto the chalkboard in the pantry so everyone knows what we're planning. Um, so I've noted on here a couple of days where my kids have basketball practice. Now on the days they have basketball practice, they are gone from like 6 p.m. to almost 9 p.m. Uh, because one of them practices for um, two hours and then overlaps with the other who practices for two hours. 
and they spend most of that time when they're waiting on the other sibling just hanging out with their friends. So um, I try to have dinner ready early or have something that they can easily heat up just depending on if they're hungry before or after practice. Um, and I always work in leftover days because I don't like us throwing away any food. So typically we'll have a couple of servings worth of leftovers from the first three days of the week. We'll eat those on Thursday and then we'll make excess of things on Friday and Saturday and eat that on Sunday. So you can see that on Monday, we're going to make chili and cornbread. Um, I have a bunch of ground beef in the freezer. And then, like I mentioned, there are a bunch of tomatoes in the garden, um, a lot of peppers, and there are a couple onions I can pull from as well. Tuesday, we're going to make fettuccine Alfredo because I've already got the pasta. I have heavy cream and the cheese I need in the fridge. And then I've got chicken that I will slice up and grill. Wednesday, we're gonna do taco stuffed peppers. This is our favorite way to use garden bell peppers. Um, we just uh, clean out all the seeds. We make basically like a taco filling. So taco meat, um, sometimes we'll throw in some rice and then we'll um, do like a homemade taco seasoning. Put them in there, sprinkle cheese on top, bake it, and then we put salsa and things like that on top. So that'll be what we'll do for Wednesday. So Thursday was leftovers. Friday, we're gonna grill up steaks we have in the freezer, and then I've got three big giant zucchinis in the fridge that we will grill as well. Saturday, we're gonna make butternut squash soup. That's nice because we can get that started cooking earlier in the day, let it cook for um, a while, and it is so good. We made this recipe the other week from some of the butternut squash we grew, and it was so good, you guys. So, so, so good. Um, I will have a meal video coming up with like favorite fall recipes and that will be on it. And then I'm gonna ask Emma if she'll make a sourdough loaf that we can use for grilled cheese sandwiches. So there we go, that is meal planning. It took me, I don't know, 10 minutes to figure out what we were gonna do for the week. And I don't have to buy a single thing from the store to make any of this. So I call that a win. All right, and I am finally outside again. Oh, I'm so glad to get to get outside before my work shift starts. It is just so pretty outside today, guys. Like the high, I don't know, like high 70s at the peak today, but it just feels beautiful and there's a breeze and and, and the sun, oh, it's just so pretty. Um, so I got those things that I needed to get done today done. Um, the laundry is in the dryer. I mean, so I gotta put it away, but it'll be done. All of the schoolwork is prepped. Um, so you saw me get all of that ready. And really because I did so much prep work over the summer, I mean, I think, I think that was just, just a shade over an hour. And a lot of that was the fact that I had to do some grading and I was grading some papers and papers just take a while because I take my time with them and everything. Um, but all of the stuff is prepped for the week for school. And so now when we go into our homeschool week, you know, everything is copied and in drawers, tests are ready to go. All of the books are out. We've got all the experiment stuff. Like everything is just all set to go. And I don't have to stress about that from day to day. Um, and then, like I said, I got the meal planning done, so that is nice, and I'm really excited that we could just shop our own pantry and our own garden. Uh, now, you might ask, do I do any kind of set cleaning on these Sunday resets? Um, so just to kind of let you guys know how I do cleaning schedules. So at the start of the year last year, I thought to myself, what are tasks that I wanna make sure are done every day, cleaning-wise? What are things that I'm happy if they get done once a week? And then what are things that can be done like once a month, like bigger bigger things that need to be done? And so in my, my bullet journal, I have a page where I track that stuff. So I have a list of the daily things and I check off that I've gotten them done each day. I have a list of the weekly things and then a list of the monthly things. So, you know, daily things are pretty basic, like run the vacuum, right? In the kitchen, in the living room, like get all of the pet hair up. Um, make sure that the sink is empty of dishes, uh, clean out the cat boxes, like stuff like that. And then the weekly things, um, so like once a week we wash all of the bath towels, uh, we wash sheets, um, we mop the kitchen floor and the living room floors, uh, sweep the basement, which you saw me do just as part of the school prep. I just kind of clean, clean up while I'm down there doing that setup stuff. Um, things like that. Um, those are kind of the weekly tasks. I vacuum off like the cat towers, clean out the pets bowls. And then like monthly are things like, uh, like we do a deep clean of the fridge, right? Pull things out, wipe down all the shelves. Um, we wash all the cabinets uh, cause we have white cabinets in the kitchen. So they need it uh, once a month. Um, 
oh, like deep cleans of bathrooms. So we do like a general clean every week, you know, just kind of wipe things down, but like a deep, deep clean uh, once a month, you know, like going hardcore into cleaning it. Um, and that has been nice. So it's not like I say on this day, I'm gonna do this task. Uh, when I'm making like my to-do list each day, I'll just say, okay, which of my weekly tasks do I wanna try to get done um, today? And I do try to get more of them done near the start of the week. So that way, as I'm going into the weekend, I'm not going, oh man, I still have all of this cleaning to do. I mean, I wanna, I wanna enjoy my weekends, right? Like you wanna enjoy your weekends too. We wanna be able to go out and do things with our families. Um, if your spouses are off of work, you want to be able to hang out with them and not feel like you're bogged down needing to get a bunch of cleaning tasks done. So that's really kind of where that all came from is I'd rather, I'd rather, um, look at each day kind of almost like, like a work day where if I get things done in that set time frame, then, Hey, my evening is free. Or if I get things done Monday through Friday, then my weekends are free. So in reality, by Sunday, I usually don't have much in the way of like a big cleaning task to do and once the things that I need to do for resetting for the week are done and then I can just enjoy and do fun things that I want to do so I am out here I am enjoying a cup of coffee um I picked up it's apple cinnamon streusel coffee it's by decadent coffee it's got it at um our local johnny apple sea festival and I'll link their website down below because it is amazing it's so 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 good um, they have another one called Highland Grog that we bought that is um, Emma and I's favorite. So I'm going to enjoy a cup of coffee and then I'm going to go out. I noticed that the dahlias are blooming a ton. We're going to cut some flowers, put them in vases. And then I still have half a bushel of apples left for making um, applesauce and apple butter and apple pie filling. And I think we're going to make a couple loaves of apple bread and just pop them in the freezer. So, um, but of course I go and call here shortly so I won't um, necessarily have time to do all of those things. I'm just going to kind of see what I can do in between work and um, I will officially end the video here for you guys um, and just kind of leave some clips of the other things that we work on this evening. But let me know what is it that you guys do to kind of set yourself up for success for the week? Is there um, something in particular that you try to make sure you get done? Um, over the weekend or do you just take the whole weekend as kind of a weekend of rest and tackle it all on Monday? Just curious what sort of things work for you and your families. If you enjoyed this video guys don't forget to thumbs up before you go. Consider subscribing and join along in our homeschooling through high school journey. Have a great day everybody. Happy homeschooling.